famous names and events associated with the Castle Bar Mal are Michael Davitt and the foundation of the Land League, the races of Castle Bar in 1798, the Year of the French, Lord Lucan of Balaclava in the Crimean War, and the last gala prima donna, Margaret Burke Sheridan. All of those have associations with the place where we're walking right now. Michael Mullen is a man who knows about all that. I asked him to take me through the history of the Castle Bar Mal. Uh, over there on my um, right, you will find the gate through which uh, the Earl of Lucan went to Balaclava. Uh, he wasn't in the charge of the Light Brigade. He, uh, to him belonged the Heavy Brigade. And afterwards, he got into a considerable amount of, um, not trouble, uh, but controversy as a result of that. In the end, he was vindicated. And he died in 1888, at 88 years of age. Mm -hmm. Uh, his father, or his son, was a gentleman, and he's best remembered in Castlebar, and gave us this mall and this panoramic view. Uh, the town actually itself was founded over there, Cushlana Wari, the Castle of Barry. Now, whether we're Cork men or Cork men or Mayo people is uh, a subject of controversy. What is the uh, connection with Boutes en Avant? Well, Boutes en Avant is on our coat of arms. And the last place I saw Boutet en avant was at the photo, uh, photo estate. Which was the Barry estate also. It's the Barry estate, which is very interesting. It and is. It stimulated me a lot. Now, Liam, just behind you is the Imperial Hotel. And there the Land League was formed. And uh, we're very proud of David. He was a Fenian. And then he became a pacifist. And um, as somebody said, where are the monuments to David? And the answer is, every gatepost in Ireland is a monument to Michael Davitt. We're tremendously proud of him, and he came out of the dark period of the famine, which I celebrate in this book. I got most of my research here. It's a romantic novel. The Hungry Land. The Hungry Land, but it also deals with that uh, period. And Davitt came out of that, out of the evictions. He returned here to Castlebar, and then he uh, had two marvellous years, and he changed the history of Ireland. What about uh, way back before David's time, the, the races of Castle Bar, 1798 and all that? Well, as every child knows and remembers in his history, the races of Castle Bar took uh, place here in 1798. Quite an incredible thing when you think that a Napole uh, Napoleonic army came through a gap called the Windy Gap there, attacked Castle Bar, threw the British troops into confusion, and the races of Castle Bar took place around this mall here. Uh, way off this way? Right in that direction there. Yeah. And consequently, uh, they uh, formed the Republic of Connacht. And the first um, president of Connacht, no, it was not Douglas Hyde, but uh, John Moore. That's right. The first president of the Irish uh, Republic, Republic Yes. was John Moore in 1798. That's right. Uh, yes. Later on, um, he died in Waterford. He was yeah. going to be transported. But, but there was some, out of that, Michael, as I remember matters, there was some dirty work around Castlebar too, and that courthouse over here Well, as associations with that. It was an absolute marvellous uh, week. You could call it a French week. I'm sure they said, vive la République around here. But the reprisals were very, very... They were terrible. Yes. And Father Conroy, who had sided with uh, Humbert, was taken from that courthouse and he was hanged over there on a hanging tree. And his parishioners from Adragul came and they took him and he's buried now beside Loch Con. Mm -hmm. I would say he was a priest who was trained in France, knew the French language and had great sympathy for the Republican cause. I suppose the, the best remembered Moore of all has to be George Moore the novelist most extraordinary man. He went off to Paris, and as they say, he was uh, as illiterate as his, his Batman. He went to become a painter, by the way, New Dega and all that, but he met Zola and lots of writers. He came back here to Ireland, and he established the um, realistic novel, and out of the realistic novel uh, came Joyce and all the rest, and had he not arrived on the scene, uh, we might be still writing romantic novels, uh, which I did partly in this book. Yeah. But the marvellous thing about all the Moors, they loved Moor Hall and they loved the lake. In fact, he wrote a book called The Lake. Yes. The dreadful thing is that Moor Hall today is only a silhouette on the landscape. It was burned in 22. What about the other great names of Castle Bar? Uh, there was a, an engineer 
an illustrious engineer around these parts. Well, <clears throat> Louis Brennan, most extraordinary man. He had most extraordinary father. He was the man who bought, brought um, gaslight to Castle Bar and an artist in his own right. But Louis Brennan was an Australian and brought to England because he had the dirigible torpedo, which meant that all the English coast could be defended by the invention of a Castle Bar man. And he also invented a helicopter and above all the gyroscopic monorail difficult thing to get Which wrong. was very useful in times of war, of course. Tremendously useful that you could put a single rail through jungle and um, terrain like that, and you could run this train on it. Uh, he also had 38 inventions to his name, and his brother was, uh, uh, Michael, was a great artist, and two of his paintings are in the National Art Gallery, and he died in Algiers. So they, both of them, had what the father had. The father was an artist and an engineer, and... They had the two, same sort of thing. Uh, Margaret Burke Sheridan was uh, another one of the great names of Castle Bar. Margaret Burke Sheridan here was uh, born close to the Mall, tremendous natural voice, went to Eccles Street. Marconi brought her to uh, Italy uh, and she sang at all the great opera houses, had a, gold, a golden girl with a golden voice. Uh, very patriotic, very proud of her country and when Turns McSweeney died, she got new, she cancelled all her, her operas, uh, her performances in Milan, and they said La Sheridan, or La Sheridan, yes. uh, is in mourning over her patriot, and that to me is a marvellous uh, tribute to her. Well, before we wind up, and on the singing team, is some Schlesian Wien Sagdine, a Crinu PC Sedin of Stowe, that was recorded by Hayat. Yes. And he was a man associated with Castle Bar. Well, uh, I believe that he was uh, in prison here during the 1798 rebellion. I'm sure when it was all over, he went back to Eris and he enjoyed his life there. And wrote Prab Sonol. Uh, which I translated. Well, are you going to sing a verse of it for me? I will, on the occasion. There are many ways of collecting pieces and stacking treasures in heaps of gold. And devil a penny you will take with you when you lie under the tombstone cold. If you rule kingdoms or martial soldiers, a duke, a king, or a grand seigneur, there's ne'er a penny they'll bury with you. So lift your glasses and drink some more. So that's my tribute.